Hey, Don, too. Hey, guys. How's it going? Happy Friday. So, um, happy early 4th, everybody. Um, we are excited about grilling pizzas tomorrow and swimming and playing tennis and um, being um, really wise social distancing. It's funny. Look at this. We're in our office today. And so the whole new thing is to be able to um, wear somewhat stylish face mask. Isn't that funny? I mean, it's like we, we have them here that are disposable for everybody to wear. But I came over here, and the funny thing is, now there's lipstick all inside my face mask. So I wanted to just pop on here. Um, hey, Terry. Hey, Tammy. And I'm going to show you today how to create a finish that a lot of people talk about. Um, a lot of people want to know how to do. A lot of people don't want to share with people how to do it. And it's, we call it the, um, the RH finish. It's the restoration hardware finish. In actuality, restoration hardware didn't come up with it. Um, hey, Denise, they didn't come up with it, but it's, it's something that you can do very easily. Hey, Amy, on a lot of pieces that you're making. Hey, Dorothy, I ought to just wait a minute because it's like, normally, I don't get to look at the camera. I don't get to see people's names. And any of you that know me, that's, that just feeds my soul. So, um, hey, Corey. Hey, Dorothy. Um, I love seeing these names because I know that y'all are on here and that you follow us and that you're great customers. Hey, Suzette. Yeah, so as you come on here, tell me where you're from because I can see you today. Hey, Sharon. Um, and some of my makers, if you, you know, if you don't know about my sister company, A Maker Studio, you want to be sure and join that, um, that Facebook group too. We have a closed Facebook group called Crafting a Beautiful Life. And um, sweet Michelle, as I am looking at her over there, maybe when we're finished, I'll show you what she's doing. Um, but we are getting ready, um, we're getting our craft wall ready. Because while I love restoring furniture, um, I love making things, I love crafting, and I love making them to where they're beautiful and they're something that I can use in my house or give to friends. So, um, but today I wanna show you how to do the restoration hardware finish. It's so easy peasy, I'm adding a secret kind of a secret sauce to it of something that I've never shown you how to do before. Um, so, yes, thank you so much. Hey, Ada, tell me where you're from. I love knowing where everybody's coming from. And then um, you're going to see, hey, Heidi, praying for your mom. Um, as far as um, show you what it is that I'm doing today, um, but I'm adding something that's a secret that I've never told you before. In actuality, because I just figured it out. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> All right, so. I'm going to cover this up. I want to show you. You can see this. Can you see this finish? Let me turn that if you can kind of see it. So I am working on um, hey, a raw board. Hey, Memphis. Hey, Helen. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Jaina. All right, so I am working on a raw board, and I'm going to turn my, my camera around for just a minute because I want you to be able to see it. I'm going to be working with um, three products. I'm going to be working with Vintage Wood. Better with age. Don't you love that? Better with age. I definitely think things are better with age. The older I get. Um, I'm going to be using um, antiquing glaze. And I'm going to be using ceruzine wax. So, three products. As easy as one, two, three. So, this is a very easy finish to create. And I promise you're going to be really addicted. Hey, Connie. Hey, Deanne. Hey, Lisa. Um, hey, Jennifer. Ooh, I may have to do this a lot. I may have to just have it where I can see you. So that way I know, um, and I am going to answer your questions today. So what I'm going to show you is how to do the restoration hardware finish. Um, but now here's the caveat. You're going to have to do this on raw wood. And a lot of you are going, oh, Amy, that's not fun. But it can be, because here's the deal. We have discovered IKEA also has raw furniture now. You know, I shared this with y'all one time before that um, they have an oak cocktail table that is like $90 that is to die for. And they do have some raw furniture that's very affordable. Um, and you can find pieces. I have found, found a big, beautiful chest um, at an antique mall that I go to. Hey, Diana, that um, 
that was wrong. So yes, we can find them, but the fact that Ikea has them, and there are a lot of cabinet shops, um, a lot of cabinets that you will run across will be raw. So um, I'm gonna show you how to do this today. All right, so let me turn the, my camera down so I won't, I won't be able to see you for just a minute. But, so hang with me. Hey, Deanne, okay, can't hear you. Okay, you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Can I, okay, hold on before I do this. Can you hear me now? Have I, should I talk louder? Somebody tell me, can you hear me? Am I, I just hate talking so loud. Um, hey, Diana. Hey, Sharon. Yes, Ikea has raw furniture. Did you know? So tell me, guys, can you hear me now? If I'm talking louder, can you hear me? Tell me, because I got to make sure that I change something. You hear me. <laughs> Probably too loud. Hey, Mark. Yes, you can hear me. Hey, Ada. Okay. I can hear you fine. Okay, good job. So whoever said they couldn't hear me, turn your volume up. Um, because I usually have a tendency to talk loud and I like, um, I'll try to talk a little softer. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about like this so you can hear me. So if just now popping on, um, I'm gonna be showing you today how to create a restoration type hardware finish as easy as one, two, three. We're using three products, Better With Age, um, and as an option, if you need to do the antiquing glaze, um, and then three, our ceruzzi wax. And then I'll talk about them um, um, kind of indi individually. So please tell me where you are, um, where you're coming in from, and then that way when I turn that up again, I'll be able to see y'all. And you can ask me questions today. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around just a little bit. So that way I wanna make sure that you can see me and what it is that I'm working on. All right, so the first product, remember we're starting raw. I'm gonna work on this end because it's, um, it's taped off. It's gonna be uh, a little easier for you to be able to see. And I'm gonna be working with um, the Better With Age. All right, now, here's one thing, guys. Let me turn this around. This is not staying. It's not staying. It literally is um, an agent where um, you wanna stir it up every time you work with it because it will have a tendency to separate. So every time you put your brush in, and I like using chip brushes, don't use a synthetic brush with this. You wanna be able to, um, you wanna be able to use a chip brush. And um, if you're popping on, you're just now seeing this, I'm showing you today how to be able to create that famous restoration hardware finish. If you like this, if you have a friend that likes redoing finish, um, furniture and finishes, please share what I'm, what I'm doing on a maker's, I mean, um, <laughs> 40 and slip on um, Amy Howard at Home. All right, so I'm gonna load up my brush here and I'm going to apply it. Now, you're gonna notice it's very watery it does have a little bit of a color to it, but it is not a stain. So like, let's say a lot of people ask me, can I get this finish on my hardwood floors? Absolutely you can, because most floors are either oak or pine. Now, pine doesn't have any, as many tannins in it. Today we're talking more about woods that have tannins. That's why I talk about with, um, the pieces that I have seen at Ikea that are new, they have, they are made out of oak. And um, I'm gonna turn this up for just a second while this dries. So um, right now, are you really Gretchen? That is so cool. So Gretchen was saying that she is working on a piece right now. Um, thank you for sharing, Connie. That is um, Better With Age with Ceruzzi Wax. I'm just gonna tell you, there it is. It's such an expensive looking finish. Um, it's so, so easy to do. And, but I'm gonna show you kind of add a secret sauce today that you've not probably done before because I've never told anybody how to do it. Um, be, and adding that because if you work with other woods that don't have as many tannins in them, what are tannins? Tannins are oils. Oils and um, um, answer to your question, Deanne. Does it have an odor? It has a little bit of an odor, but hardly anything. It's not offensive at all. It has no VOCs. You don't have to worry about it. Um, um, you can use it in your house. I mean, and here's the nice thing about it is we have white floors <laughs> in our studio because it makes me feel happy. White walls and white floors and natural light. But if I poured it on the floor, I can just wipe it up with a rag and it's not gonna stain it. It only activates with wood that is raw because it's an activation process with the tannins in the wood. It is not a stain. 
So, and here's the other good thing, when you put it on the raw furniture or you put it on a raw floor, um, it's gonna go all the way through that wood. And it's beautiful. All right, so um, it has no VOCs. It really doesn't have much of an odor at all. You have to apply it on raw wood, but um, there's a lot of pieces that you can find that have raw wood, and Ikea has raw wood now. So, you're, that's one thing. All right, I'm gonna turn this down again where you can watch me. All right, so, um, we've let it set here for just a minute. Now, because um, I'm gonna put, put I'm gonna put my hairdryer on, and I apologize for the noise, but I'm, I want you to be able to see this literally um, happen kind of before your eyes. So I'm gonna pull this back because I want you to make sure that you can kind of see it. So you can hit this with a dryer. See how it's kind of a reddish brown color now. Most stains have pigments in it, but better with age is not a pigmented stain. And I'm, I apologize, but I'm having to dry this because you need to be able to see what happens. So as, it'll dry very, very quickly. And you don't have to hit it with a hair dryer. You could very, you could very easily just leave this outside. Are you starting to see what happens? So what this is doing, this is literally aging the wood itself. It is not a stain. It's not a pigment that's sitting on top of it. We are literally aging it. Look at this. So, it'll start to kind of um, dry out the wood in the sense it's turning. It's activating with the tannins in this wood. This is a piece of wood that I got at an estate sale. I'm almost finished. And I'm going to show you another trick in just a minute. I want to get down in these crevices just a little bit. Hold on just a minute. If you know someone who is a woodworker, become their best friend. Have them make things for you, and especially... Now, here's my, here's my mother maker business advice person coming in. Now, I'm going to put that hat on for just a second. If you have, um, if this is something that you enjoy doing finishes, um, I would I would execute this finish on a piece of um, raw trim like this, and you can have it where you're in a portfolio. Um, you can have a portfolio of finishes. You could go to a cabinet shop, and um, you don't have to tell him who I am, or how, or what you know, and say, I can do some finishes for you. And this is not stain, because they work with raw wood. and. I mean, I'm just gonna tell you, my heart just kind of stops. Now look, here, here was our raw wood. Here's what we just did. Look at this. Look at this. Guys, look at this. Is this beautiful? Look at this. Look at this. It's all natural. Look at the look at the finish that you get. Is this not absolutely fabulous? Now, how long did it take? What? Three minutes? I'm gonna turn this around again because I want you to see something. As you're working with Better With Age, I'm a, here's kind of like a half and half so you can see it. You need to share this with your friends. when they. It's like, wait, this is the coolest product ever that you're ever going to see. Look how natural it looks. Now, one thing that you can do, if you want to come back a second time, so like I can come back with my brush if I want to and I'll kind of dab it here and there. And you know what it's going to happen, what it's going to, what it's going to do? It's going to... It's gonna, I love that. Oh my gosh, Deanne, I'm the same way. It's gonna create this reticulation to where you see, see these little circles and that light, can you kind of see it? Where it'll get a little bit darker. Don't overdo it, but it's a lot of fun to be able to get this kind of reticulation. And then that way when you're working on a piece, people are going, that is an incredible finish. Look at this. Now, look at this. Raw wood, I just did better with age. Now. I'm not gonna stop there because I told you, one, two, three. Now here's the deal, a lot of people will ask me, can I leave it just like that? Can I leave it where it looks weathered? 100% yes. Now, here's another secret, guess what? If you ever go and get pallet wood, you know, like pallets, um, we have a ton of them in the back in our warehouse. Guess what pallet wood is made out of most of the time? Anybody know? Tell me, I'm gonna wait just a minute. Da, 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 da. What's pallet wood made out of? As a rule, does anybody know? Michelle's over there yelling it. I'm like, 
Tell me, come on guys, what kind of wood do you think when we see these pallets out behind Walmart and different businesses? Somebody tell me, what is pallets, what are pallets made out of? Pine? You know, not as a rule. You know why? Because pine is a soft wood. Ding, 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 ding. Michelle, you're correct. Natalie, you're correct. You're, it's, <laughs> who is that, Tiffany? Tiffany said raw wood. Yes, you're right. <laughs> so good. I love this. Oh my gosh, Deanne says hard ass wood. Well, <laughs> y'all are killing me. Okay, I may have to do Finish Friday so I can see your, I may just have to do it by myself and tell my camera crew to go have lunch. So, um, <laughs> that's so funny. Junk. Cheryl says junk. Junk. No, it's made out of oak. One man's junk is another man's treasure. That's right. Michelle just said one man's junk is another one man's treasure. That's why I'm a curbside shopper. That's why Gene gives me a dirty look every, every time we drive by something. He's like, don't make me stop. And I'm like, oh, but honey, it's the best. So um, he always makes me, he, he just opens up the back of the car, and I'm always the one to have to put it in the back. All right, so if you're just now popping on, tell me where, you, um, are, where you're coming from. And we're talking about, um, we're talking about what is pallet wood made out of? We've had a lot of great comments. You'll have to go back in. So this is a very creative group. Um, it's made out of oak. Guess what? Oak has a lot of tannins in it. Oak is going to age beautifully with better with age. So you're watching. If you didn't, if you're just now popping on, do hashtag replay and let me know where you're coming from. But also to let you know, I just did this with better with age. You can buzz back to the very beginning of this Facebook Live and you'll see. Um, You'll see what I did. And so I literally just used this Better With Age product that I developed, and, and I used it with a brush. It's water-based, it has no VOCs, it has very little odor at all. And I just applied it, I hit it with the hair dryer. Um, and what I will tell you this, sometimes when you, um, when you do run the hair dryer around it, it will kind of move that better with age around and it'll puddle it up. But if you don't get that, um, you can come back and kind of fleck it like this. So, you know, in, in seeing that all um, uh, ready, muddy brown. Now, Patsy, Patsy, you could come back all, you know, there is a red oak. You can work with white oak and there is a red oak. And sometimes a red oak will have a tendency to go just a little bit redder. This is an oxidation process. Better with age is not um, stain. It's not stain. It literally just ages the wood. Now, I'm going to turn this around. And I'll, now I'm going to show you my secret sauce tip for today. So here's my uh, raw wood. I'm going to tape this off. And I'm going to show you. If you're working with um, a raw furniture piece, as we told everybody, um, Ikea does have raw furniture now. I'm going to tape this off because it's nice. When I come back, I photograph this and I'll use these as educational tools to be able to kind of show you. I don't know if you can tell. See that much lighter gray right there? You can. If you want to have a lighter gray, you can cut this. And I tell people a lot of times, do get three different cups. Do half water, half better with age if you don't want to use it straight and then cut it again, cut it in half, and then cut it in half again. So you can do like two parts water, one part better with age. And you'll get a much lighter gray. You can play with it if you want to. You don't have to use it straight. Now let me show you something that's really fun and interesting. You can take my antiquing glaze. If you have some wood that's not oak, it doesn't have a lot of tannins. It's more pine. Um, because your mahoganies, your cherries, your oak, they have a lot of tannins. But pine doesn't have many tannins. It's a softwood. So you can use Better With Age first. And I'm going to take I'm gonna take a rag. Michelle, do we have a bowl over there anywhere? Let me see. Or a little container? Broke mine. Oh, Just one. Because I've got little containers. I've got I just need a bowl ones. or something. Um, I'm gonna put, I'll just pour some of this on here. I need a container. I need to be able to kind of show you what I'm doing. I'm making a mess. So now, yeah, it'll work. 
All right, so I'm just going to pour a little bit of this antiquing glaze. Now, if you're, guys, if you're working with oak, you don't have to do this because there's a lot of tannins in oak. But if you have some wood that's pine and it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have many um, tannins in it, do this first. And guess what? There's something about the reactive quality. I've got to turn my fan on again, sorry. I'll dry this. So I just put on this antiquing glaze. It's, this process isn't gonna make a big, big difference, but used in conjunction with, after it's completely dry. You can't put this on wet. You can't put this on wet and then come back on top of it. Let it completely dry. You're not going to tell a whole lot of difference. Then you can come back and put the better with age on top of it. I like doing the better with age straight. I like using it straight when I'm doing this process because most of the time there's not a whole lot of tannins in it. All right, for the sake of time, I just wanted to be able to show you that. So that way you can come back with the better with age and put it on top of it. And when I'm doing the Better With Age, I do put it on kind of heavy and let it set. Let me show you why. Because see, see where these areas where they're kind of puddled up? Can you see that? That's what gives me this look. That's what gives me these um, irregularities. All right, so I'm gonna let that set for just a minute. Just kind of pat it, let it sit. And now the last thing, because I talked about one, two, three. If you've got tannins in your wood and it's darker like this and buzz to Ikea and get it, you're going to be able to get this gorgeous look. Here's my raw wood if you're just now tuning in. That's what it looked like before. Literally, in just a few minutes, this is what it looked like. So I'm going to now take my ceruzing wax. Ceruzing wax and... Um, Liming wax are basically the same thing. This is a squeezable form. Um, it has calcium carbonate in it and um, beeswax. So it allows me, I'm just gonna squirt a little bit out here on my table. It allows me to be able to create just some beautiful finishes that are easy peasy. Now I'm gonna use my hog hair brush. Turn this down so that way you can see a little better. I'm gonna dip that into that, move it around. I didn't do anything but apply the Better With Age. And then I let it dry completely. And you can, um, you can put the ceruzium wax on heavy or you can put it on light. It's up to you. What I would suggest, if your piece has carving in it like this, get it down in the crevices by pouncing it. The best way to do it is to be able to get down in here and pounce it like this. Now, here's the bad part. I'm doing this live and I don't, I want to be able to give you the reveal. I don't want you to wait. So I'm gonna fan this. Let me see, let me get something to fan this with just a little bit. You know what? I'm gonna put my hair dryer on cool. Just to kind of fan it just a little bit. This is the cool dryer. Don't put hot heat, don't put hot heat on wax. But in reality, I would like for this to really dry for about 20 or 30 minutes before I do this next step. But because I do these lives, I want you to be able to see it go the entire time. So if you're just now popping on, please tell me where you're coming from. My name's Amy Howard, and I'm with Amy Howard at Home, and this has been a Friday. I'm showing you how to be able to create a um, kind of a restoration hardware looking finish. Now I'm gonna take my, this is four aught steel wool. Can you see me? I can't see you. I'm gonna take my four aught steel wool and I'm gonna just kind of gently, please if you're popping on, tell me where you're from, ask me questions. That way I can answer them when I can see my screen again. 
And so what I'm doing is I am, I'm pulling that dark gray color that the Better With Age gives me, and I'm leaving it down kind of in the crevices. So I'm, I'm not, I'm kind of buffing it, but strategically. Does that make sense, everybody? Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Look at that. Yummy. Look at this. Five minutes ago, it looked like this. Now it's looking yummy like this. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of barely, I really wished this could dry. I'm picking up some wet wax. I wish this could have dried just a few minutes. So it kind of sit in there. So as I was doing this, it would actually be buffing it. Do you love it? I just love that. Isn't that yum yum? Okay, now, look at this. This was one. I'm going to take this off. This is one that I had done earlier. And I want to have it to where you can kind of see it from beginning middle and end so if you're working with oak of course can you know people will say can i do this on a floor amy absolutely you can because most floors are oak now of course they're going to be some pine floors it's time to go have my nails done guys they're looking pretty bad today all right but i came ready to pack packages now, hopefully, hopefully this is going to tell a little bit of the story. I'm going to turn this around before my camera dies. Okay, so here we go. Raw wood, better with age, better with age with ceruzine wax. Can you see that? Easy peasy. One, two, three. Now, if you're working with a wood that doesn't have a lot of tannins, do the antiquing glaze first and then do your better with age, letting it dry in between. I really would rather you um, let the cerusian wax dry about 20 or 30 minutes before you do this. I just sped it up a little bit today because I wanted you to see it. But like, here's the raw wood, and look at this. Like, is that a fab finish? Hopefully that gets you excited. It's so easy to do. You can do it on a flat surface too. Um, but I promise, this is, um, this is going to be even better after I let it dry for about 20 or 30 minutes. And then I'm going to take a lint-free rag and I'm going to buff it. And then I'm going to get this gorgeous sheen on the top. And then I'm not going to worry about going down into the crevices. I want that to stay white from my ceruzine wax. And I want it to stay more of a dead flat. It's going to give that much more contrast and that beautiful sheen that you're going to get from wax. Um, it's going to make it have that beautiful patina. Here's the deal. People ask me this all the time. Can I put matte sealer on top of the wax? Guys, no. The wax is the very last thing to go on. And I just want to really encourage you. We, we, when people talk about this all the time, especially like, I'm not going to go into much about the one-step paint, but the, one, the new formula of the one-step paint, um, it does have a leveling agent in it, and you don't have to seal it. Now, if you want extra protection, um, you can do the Mind Your Own Beeswax on top. Polyurethane was only invented um, in like the late 30s, early 40s, um, and they were um, using that on, you know, to have protective finishes. But when you think about all of the time, the hundreds of years before that, they were using beeswax and carnauba waxes to put on furniture to give it protection. And that way the use and the oils from our hands and it would add and embed into that, and that's what was giving it just a glorious, beautiful patina. That's what I want you to get used to. That's what I want you to be able to um, to create. So anyway, if you're just now popping on, please tell me where you're from. I'll go back through and watch this. Ask me questions. I'm going to check them. Um, and I want you to know, I, I've enjoyed um, not seeing my shiny nose and my, my terrible hair. Um, the fact that I'm working today, but I have enjoyed seeing your comments, um, seeing your questions, um, and I will go back through um, 
yes, make sure if you're working on pallets and you're pulling that pallet off because it's oak, please make sure there's no nails in that. Um, if you were gonna do this finish on chairs, I would wax them. I would not use, I would not use a sealer. Um, but if you were gonna do a dining table, if you wanna use our sealer, it does have a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, you could use the Better With Age and then you could use that. I would use a foam roller. Um, I tell, tell you another secret. Um, I got lots of secrets. You know, when you're as old as I am, you've been doing this a long time. I love sharing them. Um, that's why I do Finish Fridays. It's just to be able to show you. It's like people can look at the Ceruzzi Wax and the Better With Age all day, but they're like, but what can it do? It's fabulous, especially when you start playing with the Better With Age and you cut it in half with water, you can cut it in half again, use it on different woods. You can literally get a thousand different finishes with it. So. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I think um, I think I might do more videos just like this where it's just me and my phone. So that way I can see your comments um, and I can help you and encourage you because um, my, I, most people call me their mother maker. I've been doing this a long time and I love empowering people to be able to create beautiful finishes themselves because it's all about enjoying the bragging rights. And I hope that so many of you that love doing this well, turn around and start teaching classes yourself. You know, as many years as I designed and manufactured furniture and did finishes for many, many, many years. I don't really tell how many years anymore, but I don't know that I've ever gotten the satisfaction and love um, of, of making furniture as I do as teaching, because it really allows you to make a difference, allow your knowledge to become um, something that helps somebody else maybe um, have a more beautiful home or maybe start a business. So um, I definitely, um, I definitely believe in, in um, mentoring and empowerment. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a fabulous Finish Friday. And if you love this and if this is educational and you have friends that you think might really benefit from this, share it. Spread the love. Have a great weekend. Happy 4th of July. I'm having friends over social distancing tomorrow, uh, being very, very um, cautious. But I look forward to being with them and celebrating um, our, our great, great country. Happy 4th, everybody. Bye.